stack those looks. When you bring your image into Luminar, uh, one of the first things I'll do if I'm not leaving it at a base level edit, as in editing the image I bring in, and I'm going to add looks to it, what I'll do is I'll create a new adjustment layer. And that way, if I don't like what I do, I can take it back really, really quickly. I could go into the history module and change it from there, but I find this quicker and it creates a quicker workflow for myself. Car photography is not something that I do too often, but I do enjoy the challenge of it the reflections and for example the car that you can see just now was shot here so you can see the difference that that has been made using Photoshop and Luminar to get the final results but this video in particular is aimed at the finishing touches and it's using the looks to get the finishing touches so that you have a coherent set of images the main idea of this video is stacking and it's stacking your looks and your looks can be stacked on top of each other via a new adjustment layer and every one of them individually adjusted if you don't like them delete them so this video is going to look at one layer image adjustment and it's called stack those looks just like the video uh, and what i'm going to show you is editing through that stack it's a very simple edit, but it's just to get you to think about the look as an adjustment layer. I'm also going to show you the AI structure just to finish off the image. So without further ado, we'll dive right in. Okay, with this one, I'm just going to show you the finishing touches with this. I'm going to show you how the AI structure affects certain elements in it. So what I'll do is I'll just dive right in and edit this. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new layer. And it'll be a new adjustment layer for this. And I'm going to add stack those looks. That's the one I'm going to add to all my images just to finish them off. So if I click that, that is now in its own layer. With that, I have a vignette. I am going to turn the vignette off for this image at the moment. What I want you to concentrate on is this here. And because that has changed the colour. If I go for the before and after, you'll see that there's a red there. And then when I put in the stack those looks, it changes colour totally. And so does the car, but I want the car more grey for this image. So what I'm going to do is within this adjustment layer, I'm going to edit the mask. And I'm going to use the brush, and I'm going to set the brush to erase. And I'm going to take the brush size down just using the square brackets. I'm going to zoom in, as you're aware, I'm using a Mac. I use Command and Plus to zoom in when I'm doing this. And I'm just going to take my time and paint round the rims of these wheels. I'm just looking to bring back the red. I don't want it to affect the black too much, although I know it will. But the next thing I'm going to do will rectify that. So... Here we go, nearly done. And I'm just going to paint in there as well. Bring these back to red. And there. And do the same with the front wheel as well. Then I'm going to zoom back out, Mac Command 0, PC Control 0, and then we zoom back out. So now that you can see, if I show you the before and after, if I click Done first, and then I show you the before and after, so we have that, and now we've taken it to that. Yes, we've drawn a lot of the colour out of the car, but there is a reason for that. I wanted visually the car to sit with the other images without having to do too many adjustments to all of the images. And by using this look here, I managed to do that. So there you have the before and after. And as you can see, the, the H for Honda on the tires, on the rims, and the red there has maintained the same color. You'll also notice that here, in the back tail lights, it has become more vibrant. And that's just to do with the look I've applied to it. Okay, what I'm going to show you now is if I get back into my adjustment layer and I go into 
AI structure. Within this, I'm going to adjust the AI structure just to show you what it can do. So I'll zoom into this tire. It doesn't matter what tire I zoom into. So I'm going to lift this slightly. Did you see the difference there? Only in a slight adjustment using AI structure. If I zoom out, Command 0, turn that on and off. You see how the image has just became that old, tiny bit more punchy. It's also added more structure into the sky. Do I want that? I don't. So I'll take that out using a mask. There are certainly areas in the door that it's punched into as well with the AI structure. I don't want that either. I'll take that out with the mask right now. I'm not taking my time with this just for this demonstration. So that just lets you see. Turn the mask back off. So you see the before and the after on the split screen, if I show you the before, then the after, the before, then the after. I may now bring back in a vignette, but I'm going to do it on my adjustment layer. And that's just a preference, it doesn't make it right or wrong, that's just a slight preference of mine. That one's more vibrant, totally agree, but this one is going to suit the rest of the images. So I'm going to click apply on that and then go in and edit the rest of the images. So what we're going to do is we're just going to concentrate on the finishing touches to this image. Again, I've added, stack those looks, and now I'm going to just add AI structure, and you will see the difference that this makes, particularly to the bottom of the image. It'll just punch the image that tiny bit more. So if you concentrate down in this area here, if I go like that, right, and I don't want to go too far with this, so here we have the before and here we have the after. Before and after. And I'll zoom in and show you the difference in the detail here. So that's when we brought the image in before adding stack those looks on a new adjustment layer. And that's it after. So you can see how much of a difference that has made. Take that off, zoom that back out. And then I'll go on and I'll finish the rest of the images now. Okay, I'm nearly finished editing this one, but just here's a handy wee tip for you. If you are in the editing mask mode and you need to draw straight lines, if I'm using a raise here, so if I just click there, then I hold down shift on the keyboard and press there, it draws in a straight line. There's a slight curve here, so I would draw that manually. And then I would draw hold down shift again, hold down shift, draw, hold down shift, draw, and I'm only drawing around the curves really, uh, and then hold down shift and it will connect the dots, so to speak. Any curves though, your best drawing round. So that's just a handy wee tip if you want to draw straight lines whether that's painting in lines or erasing lines. So I'll zoom out with that. Command and zero or control and zero on a PC zooms you back out. So there's my third image. Go on to the fourth one now and then I'll show you the, all of the images as a set. Hopefully you get something from that and hopefully you can see what I mean by stacking the looks. If you don't already do it, it's just if you're new to Luminar, it will make a big difference in your final edits if you stack them via an adjustment layer. It's a good, really, really good practice to get into. And hopefully you, if you didn't know about the shortcut for drawing lines, that helped as well. If you've enjoyed this video, big thumbs up. And I can't remember the rest, but if you'd like to see any more videos, please check them out below and perhaps consider subscribing. Thanks again for watching and see you in the next video.